Thank you. It is so nice to have music as part of our worship service. That's true. And part of music. So this is a part of our service where we lift up our joys and share them with one another. And uh, uh, if it's okay, I'll go first. I uh, got to share my birthday, my whole life, with my younger sister Shona, who's joining us today. Shona and her family came to stay with Brenda and I this uh, past week, and they've socially distanced. They actually stayed at a bed and breakfast, uh, <laughs> socially distanced. So Shona, it was great to have you and welcome this morning. It's okay. Okay. <laughs> uh, well, let's take this time to follow Mike's lead and wave to everybody and wish everybody a good morning. Pass a sign of peace. It's good to see all the stones here this morning. All 17 of them. Are there. 17. <laughs> good morning, Isabel. We won't let anybody know you're coming in late. <laughs> We should have all yelled surprise. <laughs> Will you join me now in call to worship? <clears throat> great is the Lord and greatly to be praised. The Lord is faithful in all his words and gracious in all his deeds. All my works shall be thanks. with your 
great gift of the Holy Spirit. May this service of worship and praise be worthy of your challenge to us. May we turn the Spirit's rain in our hearts to fire in our lives. May we glow red with the power and love. May we wear out fiery hearts, wear our fiery hearts on our sleeves for all who have eyes to see. Will you join me in a prayer of confession? <clears throat> Well, how about you want to follow me in a prayer of confession? Please pray. Our Lord and our God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed. We have disobeyed your law. We have not loved you or our neighbors as we should. We have not given you our very best, but only what is left over of our time, money, and energy. Forgive us, O oh God, and grant that we may live and serve you in newness of life, Life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. <clears throat> Friends in Christ, if we confess our sins, God is faithful and just and will forgive us and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. This is God's gift to us and the world so that we may know abundant life.
But if God so clothes the grass of the field, which is alive today and tomorrow is thrown into the oven, how much more will he clothe you, you of little faith? And do not keep striving for what you are to eat and what you are to drink, and do not keep worrying. For it is the nations of the world that strive for all these things, and your Father knows that you need them. Instead, strive for his kingdom, and these things will be given to you as well. Thank you, Lord. So we'll do a uh, children's sermon, and Molly, Macy, and I think Alton's there. Yeah, Alton's there. We'll do it from here if that's okay, guys. So let me ask you a question. Do any of you in Arlo, I think Arlo had a jailbreak, right? Okay. Uh, do any of you know how to catch a monkey? So I think your mom and dad know because they've been chasing you for them. <laughs> I'm kidding. Do you know how to catch a monkey? What do you think, Mom? No, Mace? So, in some places, this is how they do it. They take a gourd. Do you know what a gourd is? It's a vegetable. A vegetable. Yeah, we'll go with vegetable. And, and, and they cut a hole in it, right? They hollow it out. And they put rice in it. And then they tie it down. And what the monkey does is he comes and he puts his hand in the hole grabs the rice, and guess how he gets stuck? The monkey's so greedy, he's so selfish, that he holds onto a big fist of rice for his belly, and he can't get his hand back out. To the point where he stays there and gets captured. That's how they catch monkeys sometimes. That's how some people do it. So the lesson there is don't be greedy or selfish or it'll make a monkey out of it. <laughs> <laughs> so, <That's pretty> <laughs> <laughs> don't be greedy or selfish, or it'll make a monkey out of you. <laughs> so, that's not really what the Bible lesson meant that Mark just read. So, <clears throat> in the Bible lesson, the Bible stories sometimes are difficult. It said, please, um, a man came to Jesus and he said, please, Tell my brother to divide our father's estate with me. And Jesus said to him, Hey, who made me the judge of such things like that? Then he said, Jesus said to the guy, Beware and guard against every kind of greed. And life isn't measured by how much you own. So we need to share, right? Then he told him about a, a story about a rich man, some parable. We talk about parables a lot in church. It's a story that Jesus tells about a rich man who had rich land that produced fine crops. And the, the rich man said, what should I do? I have so much crops, so much extra food. I can't fit into all my barns. I should knock them down and build new barns so I can hold up everything and, 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 and store everything. And, and, and then I can just sit back and take it easy. And God said to him, you fool, you will die this very night. Then who will get everything you worked for? So this is how it will be with whoever stores up things for themselves, but does not have riches for God, right? So we need to hear God's word and don't let selfishness or greed Make a monkey out of us, right? Can we say a little prayer? Dear Father, help us to be content with the blessings which you so generously give us. And help us to be on guard against selfishness and greed. In the name of Jesus we pray. Amen.
De Sorrentes. Right? You know him, Isabel knows him. And I, he was a 15th century Spanish novelist, poet, and playwright, and Isabel didn't know him. I mean, she's been around a while, but he didn't hang out at cocktail parties or anything. But he's most famous for his novel, Don Quixote, right? Which is considered to be, to, to many, to be the first modern novel and one of the greatest works of literature in, 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 in greatest works of Western literature. And, and for those of you who might not know, the, the story follows the adventures of a Spanish noble named Alonso Quiano. And Mr. Quiano reads so many chivalric romances that he loses his sanity and he decides he's going to set out to revive chivalry, undo wrongs, and bring justice to the world under the name Don Quixote. And there's one point in the story where Don Quixote quotes, but my thoughts ran a wool gathering, and I did not like the countryman who looked for his donkey while he was mounted on his back. Referring to his trusty content companion who couldn't find his donkey, even though he was sitting on it. He couldn't find his donkey. And he was sitting on it. I think sometimes we're like that. I am. Anybody looking for their phone? It's in their hand. Right? How about this one? You're scouring your hot house for your glasses. Where are they? Everybody's touching their head. <laughs> We've all done this, right? As Christians, we're like that too. We search for peace, contentment, good news, harmony. Truth, honor, justice, love, forgiveness, understanding, beauty, joy, faith, trust, assurance, hope. We look for and pursue these things regularly, don't we? But perhaps. We become the fool that's looking for his donkey while we're sitting upon it. Our faith, our religion, our belief, our church, our Christianity offers what we're seeking. It's all around us. It's within our Christian heritage, within our Christian history. It's within our Bibles, it's within our church. It's within our fellowship of believers. How often does Christ say, if I only had eyes to see, right? That which surrounds us, blankets us. It's our own Christian upbringing. Our church, the Word, the Spirit of God. At the very beginning of Jesus Christ's ministry, from the first chapter of Mark, he says, The time is fulfilled, the kingdom of God is at hand. Right? And then follow me, he says, Mark chapter 1, verse 17 to Simon and Andrew. Cast out demons and unclean spirits. Are, are we possessed? Do, do some demon prevent us from seeing this? Is there some unclean spirits that's blinding us? What's keeping us from seeing the donkey that we are sitting on? Why can't I see the kingdom of God? Why can't I? See its glory, its majesty. Why 
can't I see the road, the path that leads to truth? There's a, a Chinese proverb that's quite similar to Don Quixote's quote, only in this case, the person on the donkey is referred to as the fool. Maybe this is a simple answer to the unanswered questions from what we're searching for. Maybe we're all foolish. In 1 Samuel, Saul says to his son David, Behold, I have played the fool and have erred exceedingly. Maybe this is something we have to repeat with all our heart and our soul and echo song. Behold, I have played the fool and have erred exceedingly. Our eyes need to be opened. This is Jesus Christ from Matthew chapter 7, verse 26. And everyone who hears these words of mine and does not do them will be like a foolish man who built his house upon the sand. No one likes to be referred to as a fool, do we? Our whole lives have been built upon sand. What do we trust in? Right? We trust in our retirement plans. We trust in our life insurance. We trust in the stock market, banks, the government. Paul said, where is the wise man? Where is the scribe? Where is the debater of this age? Has not God made foolish the wisdom of the word? That's from 1 Corinthians. The beginning of my message this morning, I listed a number of things that were searching for. Peace, harmony, truth, love, hope. We're sitting on a donkey, but we have no clue where he is. We're sitting on all these things, but we can't find them. He who has eyes to see it, let him see. Jesus refers to the scribes and the Pharisees as blind fools in Matthew 23. The kingdom of God is at hand. It's here. In Psalm 14, for our bread this morning, the Lord looks down from heaven on all mankind to see if there are any who understand, any who seek God. As Christians, do we understand? Do we act wisely? Do we have any knowledge? Do we remember our Christian upbringing? Do we remember the Ten Commandments? As we embark, on a new president, a new administration, a new Congress, a new Senate? Do we remember that we're one nation under God? Do we remember the individuals who have shown unselfish love? Do we remember Christians past and present? We seek God. Because we've forgotten God before. In 1787, at the Federal Convention in Philadelphia, Benjamin Franklin addressed our then 11 year old government with the following statement. And keep in mind, it's 1787, just 11 years, 11 years after we declared and won our independence over Great Britain. And Franklin says, in this situation of this assembly, groping as we were in the dark to find political truth and scarce able to distinguish, distinguish it when presented to us, how, is, how has it happened? Sir, that we have not hitherto once 
thought of humbly applying to the Father of lights to illuminate our understandings. In the beginning of the contest with Great Britain, in this situation of this assembly, Seeking God's kingdom while all this time we've been sitting. Amen. I'll ask you now, if you're able to, to please stand and join me in reading our statement of faith. We believe in God, eternal spirit. 
Spirit, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ and our Father, and to his deep and testimony. He calls the world into being, creates man in his own image, and sets before him the ways of life and death. He seeks in holy love to save all people from their aimlessness and sin. He judges men and nations by his righteous will, declared through the prophets and apostles. In Jesus Christ, the man of Master, our crucified and risen Lord, he has come to us to share our common life, conquering sin and death, and reconciling the world to himself. He bestows upon us his Holy Spirit, creating and renewing the Church of Jesus Christ, binding and covenant faithful people of all ages, times, and races. He calls us into his church, to accept the cause to enjoy this land, to proclaim the gospel to all the world, and resist the powers of evil, to share in Christ's baptism and even his table, to join him in his passion and victory. He promises to all who trust in him, forgiveness of sins, fullness of grace, courage and struggle for justice and peace, the presence of trial and rejoicing eternally in our life. Blessing and honor, glory and power be unto him. Amen. Please be seated. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we come to you this morning as a faithful, thankful community. For you have blessed us with so, so much. We ask you, Lord, to look after our children, wake them up so our children may show and share love, and kindness, and joy, and peace, and patience goodness, and gentleness. We are very thankful, St. John's community, and we ask you, Lord, to keep watch over us, hold us tightly, as we are all so excited for the opportunity to meet a new pastor and welcome him into our congregation. We ask you to give healing guidance and knowledge to the doctors and scientists researching the cure for COVID-19, all the diseases in the world. We ask the Lord for comfort and healing of our country during a transition of leadership. We pray for first responders, police, military, firemen, veterans, people on the front lines, grocery workers, teachers. We pray for those who are in recovery from addiction, those in prison. Give them hope. Show them a road to a new beginning. Lord, we ask for mercy for the homeless and the hungry. Give them shelter, food, and safety, and let them know you, God. Lord, we, we ask for courage. Courage to act. Courage to respond to your call and use our gifts in peaceful actions. Faith, hope, and love. We pray with sick, in the morning, especially we pray for Gil Dami, Connie Dami, and we ask your blessing upon the family of Scott Allen Exley, who passed away this week. And Lord, we ask for all the blessings we keep on our hearts. these things, and all things, we pray in Jesus' name, who taught us to pray, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and give us our debts, as we forgive our debtors, and we are not to take the Lord's from you. For thine is the kingdom, power, and the glory forever. Time 
after service where we normally would accept offering. Kay is so good at reminding us that offering doesn't have to be in the form of money, it can be in the form of time or talent. So if there's anybody that wants to get involved in the church in any way, you can simply reach out to anybody on Kingsley Street or the church office, or certainly myself and Kay. Well, president of Kingsley Street is Bill Pollard. So if you do have an offering this morning, you can leave it in the narthex of the plate uh, as you're leaving church on the left. We are called to love and obey God's still speaking voice. We're grateful for all the blessings he has bestowed upon us. Come now and share and show your thanks through giving of your gifts, tithes, and offerings. Let us give as God has blessed us to give. This is the time where we would normally sing the doxology. Unfortunately, we can't sing, so I'll ask you to sing in your hearts our doxology.